physical versus digital. Something that has been talked about at length. You guys know how I feel about physical and digital media. Gosh darn it. I am a, I'm a fan of physical media, but the question was asked today in the chat of the uh, Julian Melnick 2 channel, streaming every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday at 5.30 a.m. Pacific, until about 7.30 a.m. before my wife has to go to work. And the question was asking me particularly, how do I feel about physical versus digital? And I went into a pretty long um, rant about it, but it sparked an idea and I'm like, this would make a really good cup conversation. So I wanna talk about physical versus digital, where I stand on it now, especially as someone who is now Steam Deck and Switch, and how do I reason with the fact that, let's be honest, it is a all digital gaming solution when I am a all physical media type of guy. The first thing I wanna to touch base on is I think that um, the all digital future is imminent. I think that we are going to have all digital. So whether I like it or not, and spoiler alert, I don't like it, but whether I like it or not, it is what the future holds. And I understand that. I'm not gonna try to be, you know, oh, it's not gonna happen. It is, it very clearly is. And it needs to in a lot of ways in order for us as consumers to be able to afford a lot of this stuff, hopefully. But that's neither here nor here. Here nor here, interesting, interesting word flub. Anyway, so the all digital future, digital versus physical. I first wanna start with a little bit of a backstory. I am a physical media person. That is what I like. I like physical media. So it's not digital versus physical video games, though I am gonna answer that question in a long-winded manner. It is, I am a all physical media, movies, audio, stuff like that. So let's first go all the way back to the 2000s when we saw a huge shift in our physical media. I already messed up this cup of coffee. Great, it's okay, it's okay, we'll mix it. We'll do a quick mix right at 60 or 57.8. Do a quick mix, get that nice and we're good, we're good. We saw a shift from CDs and the traditional physical media over to MP3s with the introduction of something like the iPod or the Zune. You know, thank you for your service for anyone who used the Zune. The handheld MP3 situation was massive. The number of songs you could have on your person at one time was often advertised in the tens of thousands, and that was the attractive way of going about it. You could have 10,000 thongs, 27,000 thongs, songs. I can't, thongs? Dude, cool it. You could have plenty of songs. And then video came out, and you could watch videos on this, and the introduction of this, having all your media in your pocket at all times was born with the iPod, iPod video, and stuff like that. It isn't the only way that things were done back then, but it was definitely a pioneer in its space. They were the pioneers in their space. They're like, hey, this one small device can do all this media for you. It was great. I had the first iPod all the way until iPod Touch, and then once the iPhone came out, that took over. And from then on out, I've been an iPhone user. I had a short stint, about six months, when I used an Android, Samsung S, nine, I think. I don't remember. It was a Samsung device. I loved it, but every one of my friends was upset about it, and that is what it is. I am a part of a community, so I'm going to use the device that allows me to communicate with them the best I can, and so Apple products it is for the phones. Computers, trying to get out of that ecosystem. Anyway, that started to take over, and thus came the introduction of, well, this was before iPods, but we started to see stuff like Napster, LimeWire, all these P2P style MP3 download services where you could download not one, not two, but entire discographies and plenty of other things from these servers. You know, there were the, all the different pirating, anti-pirating things that came out, Metallica suing kids, you know, the whole thing. It was a big deal. It was pretty revolutionary at the time that we could have so many songs in one place. Granted, the P2P stuff in Napster was happening long before the whole MP3 game, the portable MP3s, not long before, but there was this happening before that. But what I'm getting at is we saw music go from physical media. I mean, it had its history of records, eight tracks, cassette tapes, CDs, laser discs, whatever you want to say. It had its history of being physical into this digital space, which arguably was a better space to begin with because digitally you could have all of your 
songs in one space and also all of the information from those songs that were processed and whatever was like that. What it was like that, whatever things happened there. Imperfections, gone. It was perfect listening. Whether you like that or not is really your preference. Then came the video scene and the movies and all the different things there where we once had theaters, you'd go there, you'd see the movie, then you'd wait months for it to come out to cassette tape and then eventually DVD and then uh, maybe that was Laserdisc. I think that's what Laserdisc was. It was video. Was it video? It was video. Laserdisc was video. Excuse me when I say that. I corrected myself. And then stuff like that. Blu-rays, the different things. What was the giant audio CD? I don't remember what that was. And there were plenty of other things in there as well. Anyway, the point is this. Video went down the same road. Blockbuster, rentals, all that stuff happened. You could rent your games, rent your movies, and then Netflix came out, offering digital versions of the movies that you could have immediately. You wanna watch a movie? You can watch it immediately. First, it was shipped to your home, which was very convenient, and Blockbuster was reluctant to start doing that until later. Then after that, they started offering the digital solution, where you could rent it digitally. And then came the subscription services. And subscription services meant you no longer had to rent a very one movie. You in, in I guess the other way is you have the whole library available to you at all times, whenever you want for a very, very affordable fee, at least at the time, 10 bucks, seven bucks, 10 bucks, whatever it may be, and you're good to go. And that really was the introduction of this subscription model. Apple Music was doing it. They started to bring in music at a subscription base. First it was 99 cents per song, and then it was 9.99, uh, Spotify, all these different types of services started bringing music as a subscription. You have unlimited access to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of songs for $9.99, whatever it may be. Pandora with their radio and encouraging you to cut the cord, get rid of these traditional cable companies, the 60 to 100 to $150 for Dish and all these things. And so now we have a lot of the physical medias that we once had where you could listen to a CD, you can hand it to a buddy, you could listen to it whenever you wanted as long as you had access to that very, very physical thing itself, Incubus Morning View, you could listen to it. As long as the hardware could turn on and then some, you know, battery powered or plugged into a wall. No need for internet, no need for verification. You're good to go. In fact, you were the one making the decision. You decided you wanted to play it. You had to ask nobody and you owned it. So you got to do with it however you wanted, whether it was playing it here in your room, blasting it for the neighbors, or putting a CD on in the middle of a park and playing it there. You could do that because that's fine. It's your CD. You're deciding to listen to it that way. You're good to go. The park thing is a little bit of a stretch, but I'm getting to a point here. There's no user agreement. There's no end user agreement when you purchase a disc or use a record or play something physically. Well, let me change that. Or used to play games, you know, on a cartridge. You didn't have to agree to anything. You just got to play the game for what it was. Sure, maybe some of the agreements was, hey, guess what? There's some flashing lights. You might get epileptic, whatever, but that was more of a warning rather than an agreement. You didn't have to continue to fulfill the necessary requirements for you to use something that you've purchased. It was yours and always yours. And regardless of whether you were a jack wagon saying really, really mean things about other people or not, no one could take it from you. You couldn't get your account banned. You couldn't get anything taken from you. It was all yours all the time. The only thing that could take it from you is misplacing it or breaking it which happened. These things are fragile. If I broke this disc of Morning View, it's not being taped back together. I have to buy a new one. You can't break an MP3. Well, you can, I guess, technically. You can technically do anything, but that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is, this can always be played by this as long as this is plugged into the wall or whatever power outlet. So now we see this in video games. Video games is following suit very quickly very quickly, but there's a really, really gross part of this that I'm gonna get to in a little bit. Video games has gone from this model of physical to physical and digital. Digital, at one point, believe it or not, folks, was actually a less expensive version of the game. 
did physically, you'd be paying the premium for the physical hardware. That was the play. That's good. Let's take a look at the, the brew bed. Still a little bit muddy. Mmm. This Peru is much better this way. Oh yeah, that's good. Mm. Anyway, as I was saying, at one point, ladies and gentlemen, physical versus digital was a thing where digital was cheaper. Now that's not the case. They're interchangeable. And in some cases, there's no physical to be seen. In fact, some physical games are just the digital key on there and you have to put that disc in to verify that you have the physical game and install it on the device itself and it's this whole debacle. It's not just as simple as plug and play anymore. Now with the introduction of updates, day one updates, patches and all this stuff because games are released incomplete, often the game you buy is no longer, if any time, the game you're going to play in a month from now. They're gonna change something, adjust this, that or the other. If you were to go to a resale store to buy a cartridge of something or other, you'd plug it into your machine and you'd be lucky to be able to have it run without internet access, which is, its own bag of tricks. It's always gonna be the case. This is the way that life is tough. Internet is required nine times out of 10. There's always an exception, but we speak in the grand scheme of things, generalities in some cases, and generally this is the way that it works. I'm not gonna speak into every single exception out there. You can um actually me if you want in the comments, but I'm just gonna laugh at you because here's the deal. It's just an offshoot and you're gonna be right because you're technically right but I don't care. Seems harsh, doesn't it? It may be. But now, you have to use internet for everything. Everything. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe that they're watching it or not, that's really not the conversation at hand. The conversation is, you don't own your things anymore. Sure, technically the license is something you're a owner of, but if for some reason you decide to say the wrong combination of words and talk about the wrong combination of people, it is possible for you to receive some sort of Ban. And in those bans, you may just may lose access to your device or your games for that matter. This is possible. These things are possible. Not to say that you should be able to be a jack wagon, but I'm just saying, well, you should be able to be a jack wagon. That's fine. You can. Not to say that you should be a jack wagon is more I'm saying, just to own your things, but it's the principle of the matter. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? So now we're back to the physical versus digital and how do I feel about it? I feel strongly that digital sucks. I don't like digital. I think it's lame. I think that it robs you of the ownership of your things. The convenience that it bestows upon you is tremendous. Yes, I've got multiple kids. The thought of me carrying around a bunch of things seems like it's impractical. Playing a record is not the easiest thing to do, although I am teaching my kids about this, and this is a very special thing we share. My daughter changes the record very, very carefully as I watch her. She presses, presses the different buttons, watches the needle go. It's very exciting. Let me close my window, though, because trash can's coming. <sighs> trash man, rather. And it's gonna get real loud. I like this. And when it comes to movies, it's the same thing. I have decided to do a thought experiment. I did this prior, I made videos about this, but I, gosh, there's one hair that is really bothering me. You can see it in my perif. We're good now. I've decided to tally up the amount of money I was spending on subscription services, for media specifically, from music all the way through to gaming. And it tallied out to about $190 a month. 190. I think it actually almost broke 200 when it, there was some, I made a video and I was wrong. Like I looked, it was almost 200. There were some that were like sneaking in that I didn't see. It was Hulu combined with this, whatever it may be. That's like multiple grands a year, which can easily purchase hundreds of different types of media on sale or whatever it may be. In fact, I purchased a steel box, steel case of ugh, Spirited Away. Oh no, not Spirit Away, that's coming right now. How's Moving Castle, Spirit Away is on the way. This is awesome, this is the Blu-ray, I own it. I don't have to ask anybody to watch it. Well, I have to ask if I could use the TV, I suppose, but all I have to do is put it in to my PlayStation 5 and play the Blu-ray. Also comes with a DVD, I believe. Yep, normal DVD, that's it, good to go. Arguably better quality than the HBO Max version or Max, whatever they wanna call it. That's all I have to do. I am in charge of my media. And this is why I'm such a huge fan of physical media, being in charge of your media. Alas, 
the answer. How do I feel about the all digital future though? I feel like it's lame, it sucks. And it has made me want to stop buying games. And so I have. I have decided that if all digital is the way that the future is gonna go for different consoles, I am not gonna buy games for that console. And rather, I am switching completely over to PC for my digital purchases. Why, you ask? If it all seems the same anyway. Well, here's the answer. PC does a better job at managing all of that kind of stuff. The accessibility, and accessibility, accessibility re re refers to, you know, potentially changing the way something works. That, that's a word in its own space. The access that is granted to you based on your device is vast. You can use it in a Steam Deck, as long as it's compatible. You can use a PC, you can use a Mac, you could use, you can hack something and use that. You have access to your games as close to being able to make the decision as possible. Whereas on a PlayStation or an Xbox, or even a Nintendo device, lesser still, that access is very much so behind a EULA end user license agreement. You still have EULAs, you have a lot of EULAs in Steam, it's not void of EULAs at all, but you have more access to your games. And so if I'm gonna be pushed into all digital, I don't wanna not only be tied to a digital copy with no physical copy available to me, but on top of that, be tied to a closed ecosystem such as a PlayStation or an Xbox, where the installation is really, really proprietary and tough to manage. At least with something like Steam, you have the files and you can easily, not easily, but you can pull them and back them up and you can get real crazy with it because after all, it's just on a computer or a PC or whatever you want, computer, PC, Mac, however you want to categorize, Steam Deck or handheld. That allows me to feel a little bit better about being forced into a situation that I'm not particularly excited about. I know some people are like, it's ridiculous. You sound like such an old school person. I am. I like interacting with my media, but most importantly, I like having the decision to use it without any sneaky, sneaky things. And here's the bad part. A lot of these services have hiked up their prices over the past couple of years. In fact, we've seen higher prices in a shorter amount of time, that means multiple price hikes over the course of the past few years, more so than in the lifespan of these devices, not devices, these services themselves. We've seen more price hikes in the past three years, three to five years, than the whole lifespan of these services. It's crazy. Introduction of new stuff. Oh, HDR, 4K, all this. You can now do high quality streaming, whatever. Great, that sounds awesome. But guess what happens? The base price that you were used to paying, $9, $7, whatever it may be, is now the commercial packed one. Packed with commercials. Just a tremendous amount of commercials. And so this cable cutting thing that we did back in the past because we wanted the convenience of stop, rewind, go, is now back to exactly where we were. We're spending almost as much as we were on cable. We feel like we have the decision-making power to do the thing. But the problem that we end up encountering is we have not just less decision-making power, but we have no control over the prices. They're gonna change the prices on you. They have changed the prices on you. They will continue to change the prices on you. And as we become more reliant on streaming services and all these different services and not owning anything, the change in price can happen whenever you want. Not you want, they want. And unless you're someone who is willing to step away from the media that you also cherish, you're probably gonna lose access if you decide to stop. That's why I personally have decided I don't wanna be a slave to these services anymore. So I'm going to purchase the movies I wanna watch and when new ones come out, if I wanna watch them, I'd rather just spend the money to own them. Does that mean I have more things and more stuff? Sure, but I would much rather have more physical media, entertainment media. I'm not talking about buying a bunch of cars. I'm talking about buying some DVDs, music, maybe some records preserving the actual art itself in physical form so that digitally, I'm not having to deal with them, removing the movie from the streaming service itself that I love, then I have to go buy it after watching it a few times and still paying the monthly price, or worse yet, just changing the price on me and I feel stuck because the library that I love is behind this paywall. It's gotten so bad that a lot of movies that release just release to these services.
We don't even have the physical version of it. Eventually it shows up, but we don't. Some of the Netflix exclusive shows, stuff like that, it takes a while for the physical stuff to come out. And I would suggest that maybe you wait. I don't know, that's up to you. Me personally, I have decided to leave the Netflix world, the Hulu world, all that kind of stuff behind. I'd much rather spend 40 to $50 purchasing, you know, the DVDs or the Blu-rays of a specific show I wanna watch than spending the however many months it's gonna cost me to get through it. And cause I might end up not even finishing it one, but two, just wasting time. That's another thing. When you have a movie, you're more intentional about this. You're like, I'm gonna put this into the device and sit down and watch and enjoy it. I'm not going to just turn it on, sit there on my Steam Deck at the same time and text my buddy because there's no consequence. I don't even own it. It doesn't really matter. It's not real. I think intentionality is something we've talked about before on this channel and as a dad, it's something I strive to teach my children. In a world where all they have to do is press one button and they get the exact thing they want, I want my children to still have that kind of access, but I want that button press to be something that they actually remember making. I don't want it to be mindless like TikToks or shorts or whatever it may be. I want my children to understand what decisions mean and consequences of that decisions. As simple as choosing a movie over another, not saying, ah, I don't wanna watch it, I'm gonna switch 10 minutes in. It's already in the device. You already have it in there. You would have to turn it off, take it out, put a different one in. I don't think that that you know, doesn't happen. It does happen. I did it growing up, but it is a far more conscious decision to actually stop what you're doing to change it than it is to completely forego it and go. I feel like the same thing is happening in video games, so streaming services. People spend more time in the streaming service trying to figure out what they wanna play than they do playing the games themselves because they have this false confidence that they own all these things, which they don't. Every library that you have access to, you own none of it. It's sure, it sits there, but it's fake. It's like walking into uh, not even, that's not even a good example because you don't pay for that. Um, it's like walking into, I guess, a Barnes and Noble. Yeah, there you go. It's like walking into a Barnes and Noble and saying, cool, look at all of my books. But the second you decide to leave that Barnes and Noble and you're like, I'm not gonna be here anymore. I'm gonna go away from it, leaving your Xbox, leaving that. You have zero of those books. None of them are yours. You don't own any of them. All that access you had when you were in that store at that one time, it's not yours. It was just yours for the moment you were present in it. And that's kind of how I feel these are. People are like, oh, I'm so happy for Game Pass. Introduce me to games I would have never played otherwise. That's great. I don't think that's a bad thing. But unfortunately, that's not why Game Pass is successful. Game Pass is not successful because you are playing games you would have never played otherwise. It's successful because of people like me who thought I had canceled it, but for the past three months, I've been paying for it. That is why these services are successful. It's just low enough to where you're like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. It kind of is. And so I don't like digital. I super don't like subscription services. Neither of them I think are conducive to a good gaming experience because I think they are diluting gaming as a whole. I genuinely believe that. Moving forward, I may use both of those things again. I'm not saying that I'm never gonna use it again. I just don't like it. I certainly don't prefer it, not one bit. But I understand if I wanna play a game like Sea of Stars, I don't wanna wait nine months for the Switch release. I wanna play it when it comes out. So that might mean I have to go against what I oh so believe in. I don't believe this isn't changing the world, but it is changing this landscape of this gaming. So I hope that answered the question, digital versus physical. I know digital is going to take over, I know it. And so I am going to use the very system that I believe is going to be the best thing for digital. Heck, people who've been using Steam for a decade know this. They know that their library travels with them everywhere. Heck, people who had hundreds, hundreds of games on their Steam account, their Steam library was massive. They buy a Steam Deck and all of a sudden they're all right there. That's incredible. You can't say that for Nintendo. Say you've been a Nintendo user for the past 20 years. I certainly have. I buy a Switch. I do not have access to those games. Now, this is a console thing, not a PC thing, and I understand that. But at a point in my life where I want to be able to share the most I can with my children, it seems like the best way to go digital is PC. The best way to stay physical is media. That makes sense. I think so. All right. I think I did it. 
Ah, let me know if you disagree. That's fine by me. I'm not gonna finish my cough. Well, I am. I actually am, but I'm not gonna finish it here because I'm gonna go sit with my daughter. All right, guys. As always, whew. happy gaming.